Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Open at Microsoft. Today we are talking about the best things in Query Editor for Azure Data Studio with my friend Jess, so stay tuned. Hi everyone, I'm Erin Stellato, one of the PMs on the SQL Experiences team. And today on Microsoft Open, I have with me Jess Schultz, who is one of my fellow PMs on the team. Hi, Erin. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're quite welcome. All right. So we want to talk about Query Editor today in Azure Data Studio. Yes, that's what, that's yes. what you brought, right? Okay. Yes. And, and I'm just going to turn over to you and let you roll. Like I've played with Query Editor a ton, but I always love to see like how other folks approach it. So go for it. All right. Um, so Query Editor is the space in Azure Data Studio where you're going to write and execute your queries and view the mm -hmm. results. Uh, yep. That sounds really simple. It sounds really basic. You're probably thinking, how can we have a whole session on this? <laughs> but um, there's actually a lot of different built-in options that make writing queries easier, makes mm -hmm. it faster, and makes the results more actionable. Um, one of the first things I wanted to cover is what databases you can connect and mm -hmm. query to with Azure Data Studio. So there support for SQL Server, Azure SQL Database, uh, Azure SQL Managed Instance. Mm -hmm. There are extensions for MySQL and Postgres. There's an extension for the Cosmos DB Mongo DB API. Mm -hmm. And if you use Azure Data Explorer, there's also a Kusto extension. Did I miss anything really exciting there? You know what? There's one, which is um, the MongoDB Atlas. So that's a okay. new extension that we had a couple of releases ago that's actually from MongoDB uh, that allows you to query uh, the MongoDB Atlas uh, solution that folks might have. Awesome. So uh, a lot of this is going to be available in um, multiple different databases. So let's go ahead and look at Azure Data Studio and talk about, first off, how we get to our query editor. Um, right here, we've got a prompt. We can select Control N and open a query uh, editor window. Other options we have, file, new query, we'll do mm -hmm. the same thing. In your connection editor, if you right click a server name, you can click manage or new query. This puts you in the context of the master database or on an individual database. You can mm -hmm. right click to manage and get a new query from the dashboard, or again, new query, and this gets you into the context of that query. So lots of different ways to get to this point. Yep, um, yep. Quick rundown of the basic window. We'll go through these options. Where the number is, you start typing. You run your query. If it's running and you need to cancel it, connecting to a uh, particular server or database, which is what I'm going to do here, and then choosing your specific database from the dropdown. Other options we'll look at are over here, and we'll talk about those as I start writing queries. And I'm going to give you a quick example of some queries I'm going to write today. I'm using this Wide World Importers sample database, one of the Microsoft sample databases you can download, play with at any point in time. Um, I've gotten a request to get uh, order dates and delivery dates for a specific customer. So how I start writing a query, um, look over in my object explorer, I think, okay, I know I'm going to need some data from you know, the customer's table, like customer ID and name. I know I'm going to need some information from the orders table, like mm -hmm. uh, the order date and the expected delivery date. So number one, I can just start typing, right? And I this is how I like to do this so that I can get my full first feature I'm going to talk about in Telesense, right? So you can see as I start typing, I get lists of schemas, lists of tables, lists of columns. Mm -hmm. um, it'll help me. Right. Could you even with your aliasing? I'm never that great I with love, aliasing. I love aliasing. <laughs> <laughs> because when I'm doing joins, I don't want to write customers every time. I just want to say sc.customerid and so customer ID. And then uh, I can just start typing around here. So I want my customer. ID, 
Mm-hmm. I want my, you know, these columns I called out earlier, customer name, um, the order date and the expected delivery date. Okay, so I've got a query here. Yep. As you can see, IntelliSense makes it way faster than just having to type everything out manually. Um, Some things I can do. I can click parse and it will tell me if it has parsed correctly. It has. Great. Always useful for checking your syntax, making sure everything's correct. Yep. Yep. Um, If I want to run this, I'll highlight it and click run. I'll notice that you didn't have a where clause, but but we're not going to worry about that today, right? <laughs> I, but it's actually really worth noting because now I look at it and I say, oh my God, I got 73,000 rows. I missed something. So I can go back and add, right? Where, yep. uh, let's see, dot customer ID, I've been told that it is customer 77 and We'll filter our results a little bit faster. So now in this results pane, let's look at a couple of the tips and tricks we can do there. Um, So results on results. If you need to see things like how many rows and execution time, that's on your messages tab. Yep. Here in your results, there's some drop downs here and they allow you to kind of manipulate the results a little bit further if Mm -hmm. you want to reorganize how you're viewing things. So you can change the sort order um, and even within the results, you can search. You can narrow a range down to a few results if you want to look at things a little more closely. So that's kind of cool. And something that I have used many times over the years, sometimes you just need to take these results and send them to someone. So right click. Here you have options to do things like copy or copy with headers, but I love the ability in Azure Data Studio to just save as a CSV, an Excel file, JSON, Markdown, even XML. And you can also do that using these buttons on the side. So that's a quick rundown of basic functionality. And you know, you know something, sorry, I'm gonna interrupt you real quick. Something yeah. that the customers love that I have heard is that ability to manipulate those results once we have them, as yep. well as the additional options that we have for exporting out. So I'm so used to just saving out to a CSV that I was like, oh look, I can save off to all these different file formats. Yeah, it's know. great. Um, you know, JSON especially seems to be the love language of computers yeah. lately. And so I know there's a lot more requests for that. And mm-hmm. I love seeing that feature in there. Yep. Yep. All right, so let's amp it up one step, and I'm going to show you a little bit about a query where we'll not only look at our results, but also look at visualizations of the query results, because this is something really neat that's built into Azure Data Studio. Mm -hmm. Uh, So here I have a query that looks at um, how many orders and items uh, were done in a date range. So I'm just going to run that. And here I get my order date and my quantity sold. All right. Now, this is something where I used to, right, right click, copy with headers, paste into (laughs) Excel, make a little chart in Excel. Um, And I've done this for things over time, like when I was a DBA, looking at failed jobs, when Mm -hmm. I was a report writer, just verifying things that were in reports. Well, now, on that right-hand side, I pointed out this sidebar. That last Mm -hmm. item is visualizations. So if I click on the chart, how cool is this? I I can quickly see my data visualized. Now, a couple of things I'm going to note. My first column is a label. And here we go. So now Mm -hmm. I want the legend on the bottom. So now I have this quick chart that shows me by day. And I could label that. um, How many items were sold? I can hover over it. I can even take it and copy it as an image or save it as an image. No, really so many, little so t- many fewer steps, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and there's a bunch of different um, chart types in here. Um, the infamous pie chart, but also different horizontal um, options, scatter charts, just tables. Mm-hmm. I love this. Yep. It's a great, it's a great little bonus that I think a lot of folks don't know about. So I'm glad you pointed yeah. that out. Yeah. Um, All right, so one other thing I wanna show you is here when we're running queries, we can look at estimated plans and actual plans. This is something where there will be videos on these later. 
But yep. I want to show you one thing, segueing into this next feature. Um, I'm going to look at my estimated plan. And I know over here, oh no, there's a clustered index scan. Maybe I want to add an index to support that query. Mm -hmm. Did you know that if you open a new query and you start typing the word SQL, you're going to get a list of snippets. And these mm -hmm. snippets are some of the most common DDL statements that occur inside mm -hmm. of SQL. And you can use these to get prompted for writing things like, how do I create a table? How do I drop a column? How do I create an index? So let's yep. say I wanted to create that non-clustered index. I just tab down to that, hit enter, and look at this. I have prompting on what to do now. Anytime I see these things in green that are blinking, I can say uh, on my table name orders in schema sales in database wide world importers. The nice thing about snippets is the, the way that they're done, they'll um, fill in those fields for you that are highlighted below. Then I just need to clean this up a little bit. So create index, do not leave it named in IX underscore index name, <laughs> please. Oh no, <laughs> you do. <laughs> and then I just need to add in this specific column. And if I wanted ascending or descending, and there we go. Now I can run that. And it tells me what have I done? Database name. Yep. You can copy and paste that over, right? Yep. <clears throat> that snippet didn't update there the way go. I wanted it to. It didn't. It didn't update for the schema uh, or for the table it, name it either. It didn't. It did on my the last the last time I did it, but of course it did. Of course it did. Sales. Orders. And there and we you go. You can use your IntelliSense in there, as you saw. Okay, finally, create index. So these snippets super useful and mm -hmm. you can make your own. So if you do your Control Shift. P to bring up your command palette, just start typing in, configure user snippets, pick a language, lots of options here, and you're going to get the template to make your own. So like, I, I, again, those are things like I remember seeing in the comments uh, from users like, oh, snippets. And I was like, what the heck are snippets, right? Like, how is that different yeah. than IntelliSense? Way yeah. more useful, right? And I love the fact that you can then customize that as well. So helpful. Yep. Yeah, and this is something where if there's DDL that you're writing constantly over and over and over again, or even a query mm -hmm. framework that you're always like, oh, I just have to type out this, or I don't remember how to write a windowing function, or what is the Never. status of <laughs> when I need to use a, um, a group by, but then I also need you know, an inner join, like yeah. just take those complex SQL statements, make yourself a template, save it as a snippet. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Awesome. All right. All right. And right. last but not least, one more cool thing to show you. Now okay. I've gotten some queries written. I have some indexes. Now I need to run some stored procedures to extract some of this data that I've been mm -hmm. writing on. So how do we call a stored procedure? We say exec. We find our connection and make sure we're connected because I'd hit control N and I forget every time that I need to reconnect. Yep. All right, so now we should have, yep, in the website schema, we should have a couple of search stored procedures, but which one do I want to use? Is it customers or people? What if I don't know? Do this, right click on your object name and say peak definition. Right here, without having to open <laughs> anything up, without having to execute any T-SQL, you are seeing, is this the stored procedure I need? And you can do this for any object, right? Is this the table I need? Is this the view right. I need? So it's the index I want. And I can see this will select the top, whatever number I put in, oh, double clicked on it and it opened the whole thing. Um, 
That works too. That works too. But sometimes it's nice just to have it here. So this is going to look at text, rows to return, gets me contact information. So I'm looking at the stored procedure definition. I've noticed that I have two parameters. I'm going to go ahead and input that to start uh, searching for the customer. I want to look for wing tip customers and then max yeah, mom. I'd never spell that right. You did really well when you were typing elsewhere. So like you're killing it <laughs> and typing in a demo. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And there we go. We get the JSON that's returned that I requested from that stored procedure. So that's peaking when you're sitting here writing something and you don't know um, what the, and you can do this at any point, right? You don't know what the definition right. is. Right click and peek, you'll be able to see um, like different. There we go. Yep. Yeah. The Tables, thing I love about that, it's, it's, sorry, it's fewer views. Yeah, it's fewer clicks than opening up Object Explorer, going back, mm -hmm. right, bringing that, finding the object right click script as, right, which I think I am so used to. The peak is such a it's such a time saver. It is. It's one of my uh, useful things that I, yeah. again, few extra few clicks throughout the day saves time in the long run. Yep, it does. Awesome. Right, so there we go. That's a quick run through some of my <laughs> hot tips for the query editor. I hope this was useful and you learned a few new tricks today. Definitely. Thank you so much for pulling all that together, making time to walk through it. Um, I honestly don't play with peak that much. Like that is probably my new favorite thing uh, after, before the chart. I know you love the chart, might be before the chart, but awesome. I love the chart. <laughs> all right. All right. Thanks so much, Jess. Yeah. Have a great day, Erin. Yeah. Thanks all.